Bitcoin is a bank in cyberspace. Monetary energy. Or of the earth. Doubles every year. Listen to my words. Selling doesn't hurt. Selling is absurd. It's like cutting of your wings, but you want to be a bird. guys welcome back this is a little short video i'm going to do well you know my videos are quite not short sometimes right but i want to talk about multiple different things i want to talk about how you know what kind of fuds are going on right now and what the market is doing i mean it's just awesome amazing to see some of the stuff in the market so let me just quickly take you to this particular section you're going to laugh your head off right so market is down eight percent right this is what we're going to focus on market is down eight percent gone down to 1.49 just say 1.5 trillion right we can all almost close to say that but look at the volume oh my days the volume just came back what the hell is going on here all right look at these volumes this is just ridiculous right so we were sitting at 30 and now we've got more 20 more billion entered here we were sitting at 20 something and now we've got like 42 what's going on you know, when you look at all of this, you see $60 billion re-enter the market. But however, we see the dominance pretty much stay same. It just doesn't make any sense, right? So this is the kind of stuff we're looking at. Even though the market is quite bearish because of some stupid news today. Let's talk about the stupid news, right? So the news is very simple. How a new team of feds, right, FBI, hacked the hackers and got the colonial pipelines ransom back. It's absolutely fine right so the breaking news right this is the headline most people probably read that but we've got a problem here the problem is that they had to get a court uh, order to go and seize the money now where do you take a court order to the hacker and get that i mean people just don't think about that also the hackers are so clever that they are able to hack and ransom people and take all these money whatever bitcoin or whatever they took right but they're so stupid that they were able to be tracked now, from what we've seen so far is the on-chain data, right, and a lot of other stuff that the Fed, uh, FBI is actually announcing to people is saying how the, um, the, the money was taken in, paid into a particular wallet, and then they tracked it through 21, 22, 23 different wallets, and then they went to a central server where they managed to take the court order, and then they managed to seize the Bitcoin from there. Well, guess what? Bitcoin just solved the problem. Because Bitcoin is traceable, trackable on a public ledger, open system, decentralized, they were able to go and track it and find it. So Bitcoin itself solved the problem. So one of the guys came out on uh, Twitter and he actually, I don't have the Twitter open, but he came out and he said um, how the, the, the one of the Fed officers, he said uh, how um, they they had the private key so they were able to recover it through that but they needed a court order i mean how many hackers do you know that you take a court order and hack them or rehack them or whatever so i mean i just gotta give it to them i mean they know definitely know how to sell the news brilliant news most people see that oh my god my bitcoin is gonna be hacked by the fed the fbi is on it that's what it is it's so stupid when you read carefully and then here you can see that you know a lot of the uh, the information they've got here they're saying okay these are most probable ways the fbi is getting things so the, you know this is what's going on this is the news you can just type it today it's just ridiculous right so track down the keys uh, leveraging information it's got from bitcoin and this and that whatever right there's so many different stuff out there um but this is this is what is not likely right this is so whoever wrote this article clearly knows FBI did not brute force and get the uh, system out, right? A lot of people are saying they probably used the $5 wrench system where basically you take someone, put them in a room so you know who they are. You take them in a room and you say, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Give me the bloody keys. They probably did that. But then again, the court order, you don't do it like that. So they use the legal means to take it, which means that there was some centralized server or centralized location where they could go to probably a centralized exchange or something. So but the thing that really, really shocks me is you've got these sophisticated hackers hacking a system grubbing 4.4 billion or million or whatever it was what was it what was the total let's have a look 4.4 million right but they recovered 2.3 million of that with a court order who do you take a court order to that's what i'm trying to say here so anyway that's just the latest fud 
um, going on, right? It's just crazy. But when you look at this FUD and you look at this volume, doesn't make sense, right? Remember, I've been telling you something bigger is at play. There's a, something's going on. So just basically before, uh, like you know, we, so this is what it is. Like what I'm seeing is like the the news is FUD. But the action is in reverse, right? Is positive, is actually bullish. The action is very bullish. I mean, who does that? So this is what I'm seeing, right? The volume just doesn't make any sense. I mean, we've been tracking the volume for so long right now. So let's just have a quick look and see what's going on. So before I do this, let me just go on to Ethereum just for the sake of uh, this video. I know some people may want to know about Ethereum, right? So Ethereum, what we've got is this trend line, which is not valid anymore because obviously Ethereum still follows BTC, right? and what we're looking for now is a brand new trend line so if we just put this here and put this approximately here right we do get ourselves a pretty significant trend line I mean it's not the exact bang on right but it's good enough right we can use that it's good enough we can use this as a trend line and say well we know what we need to get above this price in order for the market to be bullish if the market is not bullish then we could possibly possibly see a 1700 dollar btc right which is a bonus day right we might see that if not then we're going to do a reversal and we're going to go back out right that's all i'm going to talk about also some people talked about the wyckoff well all i'm going to say to the wyckoff is fuck off right very simple because it doesn't make any sense there's no time frame there's nothing it's just some geezer taking all the information in the world and putting it in as a method the wyckoff method well do you know what wyckoff fuck off right let's carry on now we're going to go into the total market cap right so on the total market cap, what you can see is how we're holding the 200-day moving average. As you can see, it's on the daily 200-day moving average. This particular X cross here is a 200-day moving average. Also, what we can do here is readjust the trend line a little bit. So we've got the trend line on the market cap, global market cap. We can readjust that and say, right, this is not the trend anymore. This is the trend because we need to change the trend because obviously everything has changed a little bit. So as long as we've got two, three points of touch, so we've got contact, right, we're good. So so this is now the bigger trend line right and then you've got the sorry this is the shorter trend line downward for the total market cap and then you've got this specific aqua line which is the greater trend line and then obviously we've got the red one which is a greater greater trend line right for the total market cap and i'll kind of show you how this kind of reflects as well uh, by showing it to you on this specific chart right so what we've done here uh what i've done here is i've taken this red line that i've had before you've seen it before and i've just extended the life out of it and i'll tell you how far i've taken this line right because i just want to do something crazy and i said you know what i'm going to do this i'm going to make this as crazy as possible so if you look carefully here we don't even have dates this actually goes um somewhere around the region of about 20 30 20 20 something like this right uh if you see the price is ridiculous so this would be the bottom or whatever but i'm not even going there right now right so we don't want to go there um let's just stick around where we are right now and see what's going on so another crazy fud um i will call it a fud because you'll hear about it quite often and i want to kind of talk about this and you can see it here i've got this you know 50 day moving average here and i've got the 200 day moving average here the yellow line is the 20 day moving average and um, the white line is the 100 day moving average now you'll hear a lot of news about something called a death cross right where the um, 50 day moving average goes below the 20 day moving average guys every day is 50 day and every day is 200 day and every day is 20 day and every day is 100 day right every day is a day so just by using this lagging indicator it doesn't give us what the market is doing so this doesn't really validate us just because we're on a slightly downward trend and this decided to come and cross over it doesn't mean that we're having a death cross here the problem I see with this particular indicator is the people who are talking about it with their masses of following are creating more FUD than necessary. The fact is, every day is a 50 day from the last 50 day. So what difference does it make, right? It doesn't, it's an average. It's a, it's a random way of checking, okay, what's the moving average doing today? you know the moving average coming and crossing doesn't mean it's over this is what a lot of people are not talking about so again we're not going to use this moving average indicator to say what's going this is just to see market momentum 
That's all it's doing. It's a lagging indicator telling us what the market momentum is. What's the market doing? So every day is a 50 day and every day is a 200 day. Very simple, right? So I wouldn't focus too much on that. That doesn't really say anything bad about Bitcoin, right? Also, if I put you on the logarithmic chart, well, I did some crazy stuff on the log chart, right? Um, I did something quite mental. Uh, I don't think anyone's actually done this one. So what I've did is I've put a line on the last previous high, right? I put a line on the last previous high. I wanted to show you where this line puts us currently. So we see a 19,863. Remember, numbers could be a little bit on and off, right? Currently, we are sitting around this level here, right? Where we are on the Fibonacci 0, um, 0, 0618, I believe, right? So, uh, sorry, 03, which one was it? Let me just double check which one this one is, uh, this particular indicator is showing. So the this one is 38%, right? So 38% of the Fibonacci. Technically, you can also say this is the 0786 level, right? Just leave it there. That, that's, you know. But we've got this 50% line here. We're slightly below this. We're hovering around this. What's the worst that's going to happen if we do dump? Well, we might come up to here. Coincidentally, look at the price of this one. It's the 28K right 28k right also i've mentioned uh very uh, like recently i've mentioned i said there's a particular indicator that we do follow it's the fibs here and if we look at the fibs here right you can see that if we do fall within this range and then we do a rebound we should be looking positive right this is where you want to buy so again historically so i'm going to try and show you history right Historically, what you will notice is there's been, been very few occasions where we've entered this particular zone. It doesn't even want to, it doesn't, it's, it's a lagging, these are all lagging indicators. Anyway, so historically, every time we've entered these particular zone and gone into this light green shade, right? Light green shade. Whenever we enter these light green shades and we start to move into this blue zone, that's when we go parabolic. That's what you need to be looking at. So that's when we go parabolic. So right now we're in this green zone. We might enter this blue zone, this light green shade, right? Which I believe we will, right? This is exactly where our indicator is telling we are going to come in. If we do a rebound and we come back into this top blue zone, well, then we're going parabolic for sure, right? So this is the, the bearish scenario is the 28K, but the bullish scenario is to the moon, right? So we'll leave that. Let's go to the next chart just to come and show you a few more bits and bobs on this, what's going on. So here, what I've done is I've actually drawn some boxes, right? These boxes represent range. So you can see that there's a specific range we need to go above in order to reverse the trend. Also, in this particular one, I wanted to show you the bottom range, right? This is kind of a support range that we've got. Coincidentally, the Fibonacci also matches this particular area. And if you look carefully, you'll see a descending triangle. A descending triangle right so this descending triangle could right so there's two types there's multiple types of triangles now this is the one specific type of triangle that could see a breakout right most people could say well this might break down yes it could break down but as you can see this particular range here which is showing at 29,958 is the bottom of the Fibonacci however on the uh, if you look on the bottom of this particular range we've got the $28,700 so about 700 off but that's what it is you this is, you know, this this is what I'm seeing right now. But remember, I did say that our um, the uh, the 19k or the 20k is still in play. And in order to understand this 1920k, if you look at this particular line, well, if we do come back to the 20k, 21k, or even this 20k, well, this is pretty much the bottom where we need to be, right? That's when we would see a reversal. I think we're not going to touch this price. Even if we do, we're going to see massive action. I'm telling you, it's going to be Christmas all over again for the institutions. If we do hit this level, trust me, this is what they want. But the 28K looks more solid. It, you know, to take down a whole section to, you know, to, it's not going to happen. This, if even if it keeps on going down and we enter a bear market, then we're still going to be holding around this, right? And this log is telling me that this is this is it, right? You can't go below this level. This 20K is like the threshold. You cannot go below that, right? And we're obviously going to see a reversal. Now, how long it could last, we don't know. But we want to look at more data and want to understand what's going on, right? 
So here, this is the previous chart that I drew and I told you how we need to break above certain levels. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some of these lines off just to kind of readjust everything, right? This lines I will keep because we do have a lot of traffic around this zone and you see it later. I'll show you on another chart. Uh, but let's get rid of this. We're also going to get rid of this. This lines I'll leave for now because this is our um, current um, supports that we had, which we broke. Now we've got a support here, but they will be our um, future uh, resistance. So we're just going to leave that, right? But what I want to do is modify this trend line because currently this trend line is not valid. Also, the greater trend line has also changed as well. So what I want to do is just move this line over to approximately here and move this line over to approximately here. As long as we've got three or four touch points, we're good, right? So we've got about four touch points here. This is just an approximation, right? Just wanted to show you. So this is now our trend line. So in this particular trend line, as you can see, we do not have an upward trend line yet, right? We do not have an upward trend line yet right so we're just going to leave this approximately here because we are going to see some more candles and i think we're going to come here now i want to show you another pattern that i was actually looking at when i looked at this and i'll show you in a shorter picture so just take it from here for example and if we come say up to this level here right just up to here and we come back now what do you see here well what you see here is an ascending triangle right and an ascending triangle will show resistance um sub support here and actually has more chance of breaking out so we might have a breakout trade around these areas if we fall back into this particular zone right and also what we can do is if we wanted to we can take a shorter time frame and we can say let's put another fib here and see what another fib is telling us and we can see that this fib is telling us that this particular zone where we got all these traffic here this would be our uh, p perfect buy zone re-entry point right so that's what we're looking at um i'm not gonna leave this there because this is uh actually not uh, no point to leaving that one there but what we want to do is leave these lines here and say this is it also this white line here i'm just going to leave it currently just leave it here you can see this chart on the public chart anyway it's available but this would be the zone where somebody you know if the institutions want to come in this is exactly where they would want to come in right let's zoom in a little bit more and let's see what else we can see right so same again this is the same chart but what we're looking at is a more on a daily time frame right so on a daily time frame again same story we move the trend line because this is now our great trend line so we've got a great trend line here um, so this is the greater downward trend line and we can use the bodies or the wicks or whatever you want to use right doesn't matter so this is our trend line right now and which also invalidates this particular trend line as you can see this particular trend line is invalidated so in this one i'll remove it right and again all of these they do not matter anymore none of these matter apart from these two here all right um, even this one funnily does not matter so these yellow lines would be our new resistance lines that we will be looking at i'm going to take this one off and leave these two so this is the place you're looking at so remember our range i've put the range around here and we see a slightly different pattern forming here right and then here we see another pattern forming so this is forming into a triangle right same chart same chart as you can see but we're putting it on the daily time frame to see what's going on right so again this is the same chart i'll update the same one again this is uh on an hourly right so that we had four hourly we've got the daily uh and we're trying to find exactly what's going on so on this particular one um also i wanted to show you something else on this one actually um so i've got the stochastic rsi set up right i've got the stochastic rsi set up and you can see on the stochastic rsi on the weekly where we are right now on a weekly we're actually doing a higher low right we're actually doing a higher low and if I just flip this over to the monthly, right, you can see this is the candle that basically I was talking about where we might be looking very uh, bullish, but it could go down. This candle is still telling us that we've still got quite a bit to go. And I'll tell you in a percentage form. So it makes sense to you, right? So this is where we are right now. And what we can see is we can go down another 10%. So we might go down another 10% before we do a rebound. But do you know what? The best part about this candle is a lot of people are using this candle and saying, oh, look, we've gone down. This candle could easily reverse. We're only eight days into the month, right? This is only a week. 
So we need to see minimum at least two weeks in order for us to even judge this candle. But right now, we don't know anything, right? So we got to take, be patient, stay calm and see where we go from there, right? I'm not going to put any buy or sell or, um, signals here because pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Resistance is literally means sell. When I'm saying support literally means buy, right? But what we can see is the data is suggesting that this would be a good buy zone. But even then, I would say, guys, just be cautious. If you haven't already bought BTC or whatnot, right, um, just wait a little bit. Unless you're investing for five years, then it's a different story. But if you're buying shit coins, please be careful, right? And one other thing I'm going to say, right, big warning, because we had this mega conversation yesterday. We had a meeting for about six hours and I kept on saying to the brothers, I said, avoid trading avoid trading because trading is actually very very dangerous um you can lose a lot of money especially in these volatile times sometimes it's better just to buy and hold dollar cost average buy and hold don't go around wide because it is going to be the wild wild west right now and trust me it's dangerous you don't want to be in that time when when things go down because you could easily lose 10 20 percent every day you don't want to be trying that so try and avoid all of that there's another news I wanted to talk about as well, another FUD, right? But I wanted to, I'm going to play, I'm going to play this for you so you can uh, hear this. And uh, I think this is it, yeah. I'm going to play this for you. So let's see how you feel about this particular uh, scene here. If not, then I'll overlay it again so you can listen to it perfectly. Said this. The currency of this world should be the dollar. And I don't think we should have all of uh, the Bitcoins of the world out there. I think they should regulate them very, very high. Bitcoin, uh, it just seems like a scam. I don't like it because it's another currency competing. I don't like it because it's another currency competing with? Against the dollar. Essentially, it's a currency competing against the dollar. I want the dollar to be the currency of the world. Mr. President, with all due respect, the dollar is a scam. It's an overregulated fiat currency pumped out by a central bank that has nothing but IOUs to back it up. Bitcoin's creation code required only 21 million Bitcoins ever be produced. As of February this year, 18,638 of those 38,000 and some of those sneaky digital bastards have been mined, leaving 2.362 million out there in the ether waiting for my hot dog fingers to theoretically grasp them. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies can't be tracked. They're encrypted. And this drives the DC gummers out of their silver mines. President Trump wants it to yield to the dollar. President Biden likes ice cream. And Janet Yellen wants to regulate the living spit out of it so IRS agents can sift through your Coinbase account or other wallets and steal and manipulate your hard-earned money to pay for Bernie Sandals, Sanders' nocturnal commissions. <laughs> Bernie Sandals, Bernie Sandals. Did you get that, right? So this is the kind of a story. I love it, right? So the orange-faced man, right, got told by the yellow-dressed lady, good on you, your hot dog fingers, you grab those BTC, you know exactly what it is, she knows more than he does, and I respect that, right, but the fact is, he literally endorsed how Bitcoin, he gave it validity, they know, trust me, they are talking within themselves, they know Bitcoin is as legit as it gets, and they're afraid that Bitcoin, people, more people are dumping their dollars and going into Bitcoin, they know that basically Bitcoin's here to stay, and it's going to take over as a monetary system, because a a lot of countries are getting uh, 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 interested, like El Salvador as a country who's now using it as a legitimate currency on their country's balance sheet. So it's going to be their legitimate asset. There's about another 10 or 11 South American companies who are also talking about this. It turns out there's people in the White House who are invested in crypto. Um, Janet Yellen, she's even said around this lady here, she's even said that um, she's got some crypto as well. I mean, these this guy here, he hasn't said anything, but they all know about it. And the thing is, is this is kind of like so it's it's a fad. They're trying to create some fad, right? They're trying to just kind of shake people up a little bit. But they're all invested in it. But the beautiful thing is, is how he says Bitcoin is a currency competing against the US dollar. And he doesn't want that to happen. He wants uh, a USD to be the global currency. Do you know what he just said? He said BTC has the potential. Isn't that bullish? For me, that is bullish. So this is the kind of stuff I'm seeing. And this is the kind of stuff like it's just like, you know, 
making me more and more and more bullish. It's like, you know, so I'm going crazy and I'm like, do you know what? Every single uh, penny cash I could get, I want to get it. I want to dump it into this, right? Because I know what this is going to be doing. Um, and it just looks too, too bullish where we've got $141 billion, um, re I mean, $60 billion re-entered the market. And um, so far, even though the market is down, money's coming in, right? This is what I'm looking at, money's coming in. So there's a lot of action happening um, which is all telling me it's going to be bullish. So you heard the news, you saw it, um, you make a decision. Let me know in the comments what you feel about this um, and uh, how we feel. Also, somebody else asked me a question. So I'm just going to quickly answer this question. Somebody asked me, uh, are we expecting any more? So this is what somebody said, right? He said, right. Uh, he said, so we've bought the dip and the dip and the dip. Oh, the dip and the dip. Are we expecting any more realistically? Yes, we are. We're expecting a 28K, right? Also, the brother asked Ava uh, Avalanche, right? Which is um, cheap right now. No financial advice. Bro, everything is at a discount. Remember, look at the 30-day average. If you're getting that discount, you can't go wrong, right? But you got to be prepared to be in it for at least five years. That's the psychology, obviously. Things could turn in five minutes, but if you have that mentality that you're going to be in it for the next five years, you're laughing. Avalanche is a coin that I've recommended personally, no financial advice, that I'm going to be holding for five years because I'm very bullish in it. It's got four decades worth of technology, I mean, research into it. In fact, Bitcoin also shares some parts of what Avalanche has or the founder of Avalanche created way back in the days. So this is what's going on i mean we see a lot of baked beans and this and that right it's it's it feels like that but remember when you're expecting something it's going to be the opposite so if, if you're expecting to go on a baked beans diet well trust me there are lobsters and all sorts of other stuff at the other side right so um i hope this kind of makes sense guys i'm not going to do this any longer um this video make it any longer um, i hope you like share subscribe um and let me know in the comments what how you feel right and um yeah we'll go we will we, we'll come back again but as you can see i'm smiling i'm happy especially looking at the volume right that volume coming back you 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 can see news says down news is back opposite to the volume that's you know that's what we like to see right we want to see people taking the opposite action to the market because that's what the smart money does adios amigos